Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little Thank you guys bit so much for tuning into the channel. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, telling a friend about Dusty Vision TV. And on the line. I have a dude who reached out to me. He says he has a story that he wants to share all the way from OKC. Ladies and gentlemen, from Outlaw 20's Blood, I have Renegade. Let's jump right into it. I've interviewed a, um, a couple of cats from OKC, actually, but I've yeah. never interviewed a, a Blood from OKC. So uh, definitely right, right. looking forward to hearing your story. Um, shit, let's, let's right. start uh, all the way from the beginning, my man. Um, to the best of your knowledge, before Crips and Bloods came to OKC, were there uh -huh. other gangs that were already there? When it, I say about nine, 89, 90 is when it really, re, it really hit. Is that because that's when I was there? That's when I actually got involved with the gang. So I can't speak too much like eighty seven, and I, I don't even think it was too much going on then with it. But like I, I can speak for eighty nine, ninety, and on up. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Do, bit, do you know if like GDs and BDs were already around? You know. Vice Lords no, not 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 to my. I didn't really see any. I mean, the only thing I knew it was it was like they had the little groups of uh, you know, neighborhoods and stuff like that. And then around the time, yeah, with colors and all that. Like you've heard that before, but that really is that's really around the time that, to my recollection, that it where it really started popping off. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So colors came out in 1988. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. 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 And for, and so you just started noticing just you know, different Bloods and Crips just popping up everywhere? Yeah, like, you know, I had been back and forth to Oklahoma City. My brother was, you know, he was a Blood, and this had to be back in, whoa, well, this is probably about 87. And, you know, I think he was a Blood, you know, but I think some people from Cali put, you know, put him on, whatever. Uh -huh. So, yeah, but it wasn't me. It wasn't many around 87 or 86 and I like that. Okay. And shit, the 80s, you know, the mid to late 80s, probably the biggest form of entertainment even going into the early 90s was gangster rap do you remember gangster right. rap having an effect on on that as well things like oh, pyro love and Heck banging yeah. on wax <laughs> i was just yeah I was just, that what you just had on i was like, i remember that oh yeah man i had a you know music have always had effect and even now with with that but yeah it was really yeah yeah, that was really that made a lot of people uh, go go a little crazy in music okay <laughs> you know yeah so was that banging on wax album was that pretty big down there from what you remember Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And that was huge down there. Mm. Everybody was, you know, bumping that. You know, the Crips had there, you know, what they played. And we had our side of it on the same CD, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was crack. Yeah. And, and I have to say, and, and many Crips have also said this who are in my age range, everybody hands down says that the, the Bloods had the, the hotter side. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> you know, but I, I'm gonna say that anyway. But yeah, but you know, they had they they was they was getting doing their thing too. Though. I literally you had know, but, I literally had Crips who told me they were bumping Pyru Love on the down low. I was like, damn. Oh yeah, come on, that was come on. You got to bump that was jam. <laughs> man, yeah, man. That was the hit single on that man. That was that was a hit there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's let's yeah. take it back to who came before you. Do you um do you know who I guess you know were some of the dudes that actually started the hoods out there? Some of your OGs. Okay, so, yeah, my story is like this. Like, when I first, you know, got to Oklahoma, first, like I said, I used to hang around with Vice Lords, and uh, when I was in, I used to live in Jackson, Mississippi, because my mother was there. So I always hung around with the Vice Lords, because that was just the neighborhood and the project. So when I got to Oklahoma City, actually, I had went to Riverside, California, too, so I always hung around Bloods, but I wasn't, I was just affiliated, because mm -hmm. I just liked the red. I was like, yeah, these dudes are cool, but my OGs is from L.A., so, because it was no Outlaw 20, it was Outlaw 30s is who I hung around mm -hmm. in Oklahoma City. So, but Outlaw 20s is, you know, that's 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 from California on the south side, East L.A., right? Okay. Where y'all at? Where, uh, so my OGs actually came from California and put me up. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And who are some of the, uh, the other gangs out there in OKC that we might recognize out here in L.A.? Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> keeping in mind that I haven't been – to Oklahoma City in quite a while, but back then it was, Bloods, you had, uh, you know, Inglewood family, a uh, 456 Pyru. My brother was from VNG. You had, uh, who else? Eastside Pyru. But at the time, at that time, when I gang banged, we were, we were outnumbered, like, big time. 
by Crips. Like it was like probably man, probably ten Crips there, one every blood or something. Mm. So it was like it was mostly Crips, but it was Inglewood family would probably be the biggest one, and uh, four five six Pyru was the biggest in uh, Outlaw Thirties. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's, that's such a trip to me growing up out here in L.A. I never gangbang, but it just trips me out hearing things like Inglewood Pyru, you know what I'm saying, in Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be one of the biggest yeah. sets. Yeah, that's just, that's where it comes from. Because let me, you know, so the thing is like, you know, I was affiliated with Outlaw 30s in Oklahoma mm-hmm. City. But like I say, the dudes came from California, and I just like they swag. Because I spent most of my time, you know, shooting and, you know, with the violin. But they came with the money. Mm. You know, dudes straight from Cali, and they was like, man, they, they was making money. I was like, man, let me, <laughs> you know, they like me. And I was like, hey, man, what y'all doing? Mm. What's up with y'all? So, you know, we, they put me on or whatever. And, uh, yeah, mm. and it went, went from there. Oh, yeah. As the time goes by and the earth rotates, we gon' fly high up to outer space. And we would never fall down. I'm one with the universe, call me the sound. The bass booming in your speaker with the microphone, I possess it's a heater. You better drop it, let go. You can't touch my beats or my flow. Nigga, Kevin Smith, my name, but not the director, we ain't the same, man. I'm a pimp by nature, inside of me is a god, the creator Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean But working every day from 9 to 5 in my thing. I feel like a trap, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time, overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped, can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble. Trouble, trouble. One by one, we start to subtract them. Separate facade from who really bought that action. Feel like I'm trapped in the room without a key. Four walls surrounding me, stripping my identity. Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive. Take away my culture and my nationality. Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. double standard to killing my folks. Like it don't even matter. And when we gather, disgusted by the charades. Bullets spray the crowd, target practice in the game. No accountability, so who bears the blame? They want to see us violent and justify the change. Back to how it used to be. Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel as heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For awareness I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot Who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this And hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified And made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it Have a purpose When he smiles They don't really know What's under the surface I'm a product of pain Racism and cocaine I never tooted once But it's all in my veins That shit is all in my genes See, it's my destiny This is nothing new kid I'm just an old recipe A boring story That you've heard hundreds of times Blah 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 Wham 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 Hate my life And my parents both suck I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, our dumbasses ain't I listen. feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble So you were running the streets, jumped off the porch early, uh, yeah. and you told me that you did seven years in prison. Yep. Damn. Yep. So yep. did you did you do time like in jail or anything before then? Uh, man, I uh, I just uh, six months in the county, I went straight to prison. Damn, damn. Six months in the city jail, or whatever. I went straight to prison. Wow. What was the convict? What were you convicted of? Uh, two counts of armed robbery with a firearm. Mm. Because we was, like I said, man, I, that's why I went, man, I, we was doing some everything. I mean, you know, I never was a, no drug dealer and all that, but I was a 
you know, just robbing people. You were people. gunman, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Damn, dude. And so, the laws down there are a little bit more free, right, as far as you could probably carry – you know what I'm saying? In California, the laws are strict as fuck. I can't even walk out to my yard with my gun for the most part. But is that different uh, in Oklahoma? Now, like you, like you, like I said, you got to keep in mind I hadn't been down there. Now mm-hmm. I heard that you know because I still got homies I talk to and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. Everybody pretty much got a gun. They ain't really tripping like they used to. But you talking back in the '90s, man, they weren't going for that in Oklahoma. They locked everybody up. I gotcha. Gotcha. Number two in locking up, uh, they was number one in locking up men and number two in locking up women. So damn, you, better not breathe, you better not breathe wrong. <laughs> oh shit, it's still pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? But not like back then. Damn, damn. So talk to me about the first day walking into prison as an active gang member. What's what? What's your first day like? Uh, you mean the jail or prison? Because jail was bad. Man. Okay, like, talk to me know, about jail first. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah, L.A. Because I know a lot about you know L.A. County jail. I had so many. I got so many homies from L.A. Mm-hmm. It's not like that, but it was cl- it's close. Like you better you know you better be in the right. If you get put in the wrong cell or something like that, you are gonna get the L beat out. You might you might you know, it's it's bad. So you when you go up in there, you got to know you know what I'm saying where to go. You know what I'm saying? So where's my homies at? What's up? And everybody's hollering. Because if you don't, plenty of dudes get put in the wrong cell, man. They get they get stabbed up and pushed up under their bunk or something. Mm. You take the food, whatever, just beat you, beat you up until they get you up out of there. Damn, dog. So um, <laughs> let me ask you, is it, uh, yeah. are, are there a lot of Mexican gangs out there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was there, you still had the Southside Loco, GBC. While they told you got, and there's some other new ones, you know what I'm saying, that they got now. But yeah, you always, when I was there, they had Southside Locos, which they still got, GBC, Grand Barrio Central. And some more now, though. Mm. They got a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I would I assume heard. so. Yeah. So in prison, well, in jail, let's 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 start with jail. In yeah. jail, is it on on site with the, another crip? Or, you know, back yeah, yeah, going sir. back to your day? Or are you guys banding together yeah. as in for numbers? Yeah, it's in jail. You're not really around them like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if you can get to them, yeah, it's on site. It's on site. We'll even plan. Like, yeah, man, let's go. Let's go out here when they let us out, man. Uh, we go to the, the primary, or whatever. We about to. I'm a, uh, we gonna do this and do that. So yeah, it was on site mm-hmm. in jail. But you were like I said, you wasn't around them like that because they kept you kind of separate. Okay. In jail, yeah. And you Prison said. A and you said jail was crazy. What's the craziest thing that you experienced in jail? Uh, man, not too much, man. Like you just, you always hear somebody get put like some, some crip get, he goes into a cell, either not knowing, you know, that this cell is full of bloods or a crip going to, I mean, a blood going to a crip cell and then they just getting the hell beat out of, you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much all you're going to see. Cause you can't, the way that it was set up, you can't, you can't see now you behind steel doors. That's the old county, uh, city, Oklahoma County. So you're not really seeing too much of nothing. You, you just hear it. Damn. Yeah, That's even yeah worse. you can't really. Yeah, it's not open like that. It was, you know, it might be now. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> not back then. And a lot of the officers, I'm sure, were knew that. Hey, this dude's a crip. Let's throw him in the blood cell. Yeah, or def- vice versa. definitely. Yeah, because when they check, they're looking at tattoos. You know what I'm saying? And they like, and they ask you like, "Who you with?" You know what I'm saying? Because it was really bad, and they were like, "Man, I'm with this." You know what I'm saying? Put me, put me with my homies, or whatever. And that's what they'll do. If you don't mind talking about it, can you talk to us about the the whole robbery and what happened that day? Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. It's, that was a long time ago. I'm good. I did time. I did time for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, no, nah, man. I just uh, I was at the point like I was. Man, we was doing so so much crazy stuff though, man. Like I could have been. I could probably could have had life sentence, man. If I would have got caught for half stuff, I did. But it was a particular day, man. It was like five of us. Cause we was just robbing to eat. Like it was, I was staying at uh, one of my homeboys' house with some girls, all my homies and stuff. And uh, we was robbing like every, man, every dang day, man, tr- just trying to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just robbing so, people on the street, on the, yeah, on the car, just catch- on the street, okay. store, everywhere, like carjack, everything. Okay. And so at this particular day, we was just walking in the neighborhood or whatever, like five of us. And we was like, and we saw these two white dudes. It was like, uh, they were standing in the yard, old dudes. And we was like, all right, yeah, let's get them. They look like they got some money or whatever. <laughs> and so uh, one of my homeboys, we all ran up there, but I didn't, I didn't pull a, pull a gun out. But I took, you know, I took, you know, ain't no thing, because I was there, and, mm-hmm. you know, ain't no big deal. But 
we was like, well, yeah, uh, what time is it? Uh, we was like, what time is it, man? We was asking the people. They was like, uh, they already knew what was up. Yeah. And so we, uh, <laughs> it's like, all right, because I'm laughing the whole time. I had a bandana on my face. And they couldn't see my face or whatever. But long story short, they said it was me or whatever. But that's irrelevant. But we just robbed them. And so at gunpoint, we took like, they had like 800 or some dollars in their pocket and credit cards and all that. And that's how it, but I didn't get caught then or nothing. It was like two, like two, a week or two oh, later or something. Man. And it came to the apartment. How, so did, we, how did you get, how did, how did you get caught? I guess is the question. Man, like I said, I still some one of them girls. Somebody probably told. I don't know what was going on with that. I don't know, but they the police just came to me because I it was a Saturday and I was watching uh the NCAA finals. I never forget it. I even remember that March twenty second on a Saturday. But the police knock on the door. They was like, uh, uh, they say my name is Clifton here. I'm like, and I didn't think nothing of it. You know what I'm saying? It was a while ago. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, what's up? And they was like, uh, yeah, you coming with us. You, uh, we got you, you under arrest. So I'm like, and they can't do nothing to me. I'm like 16. I'm like, I ain't even do nothing. So I'm like, I don't care. And they put me in a police car or whatever. And that was, <laughs> I didn't see the streets no more. Damn. <laughs> For a minute. Mm. So did, they, did, did someone point you out or like as far as the, the witnesses? Or? Man, I still don't know, man. You don't have, you don't have people, man. There's girls was involved. I ain't no t- I don't, I don't know, man, mm. what happened. But they say that they, they in a lineup, you know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. said that I was the one. One of them, one of the dudes said it was me. It was two dudes standing in the yard, and one of them said it wasn't, even in court. Mm. But you know, public defender, they made me set. Uh, they said they offered me two life sentences. They said we gonna if you don't uh, take this ten years in and five out probation. They said we we give you two life sentences, and I'm 16, so you know they do that. To, they do that to people though, man. Especially minorities, they they come with that. We can give you this, give you that. And so when they did that, I was like, oh, I'll take the 10. <laughs> Damn. Ten, yeah, so that's that's what it went. So. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Come on. It's just you and me. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go to recess, but I take that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200000 I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling Absolute, we put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug, they trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy, replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up, and now we two steps beyond these flames, kicking up dust, never running from the smoke. We really want the smoke only from Clone God, though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm I'm talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. I'm a Gemini, bitch, so you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars. So pardon if I snap, girl, I'm sorry. Bitch, pass me the lighter. I'm about to play Street Fighter. Hot dude in that pussy, like my name Kenny Ryu. She says she never kissed a girl. Well, bitch, tonight you experiment. Put this tablet on your tongue and just enjoy the experience. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. So you did six months in jail and your stamps. Yeah. You, you entered prison at uh, under or at around okay. 17? 17, y'all. Wow, dog. So you're probably, I mean, you said you're a big dude, right? Did, did you say that, 6'10 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Well, no, I wasn't in. Oh, okay. I'm 200 and something now, but yeah. then I was like, I was 150 something. That's what I was going to say, and that's young. You're in there with dudes that are in their 30s and 40s. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk to me about, you know, walking into prison as a 17-year-old. Okay, so I wasn't the only one that was young like that, and then I had the gang mentality, man. It was so, that was my protection. Like as long, I mean, I don't mean protection as I got homies. I mean, just that bravado, just putting that on like that's like that. I didn't care. Like my attitude was like, plus I had family issues. Like I've been like neglect and shipped around and people.
like, you know what I'm saying? So when I went in there, it was all about, like, nigga, don't fuck with me. Like, I'm a, shit, what, what you want to do, nigga? This out of our 20s. This, this, that was my attitude. So it wasn't no fear or nothing like that. It was just like, okay. I mean, it was in a way, but you know, that you know, that game in town, I was like, shit, I'm ready for what, shit, whatever's covered. Let's roll. Mm. And back then, there probably weren't, like, you know, in, as many Crips and Bloods in prison, so you probably stood out and probably that probably worked to your advantage yeah it was oh yes, it, it was. was oh okay it's okay. like that's where they all was at oh, okay well yeah <laughs> it, okay. Was, it was like more in there you know you know because at that time Oklahoma was locking people up man for real okay. and a lot of california a lot of people from other states you know saying back then was coming from other states and stuff so yeah it was it was real it was really bad up there. damn dude that's why i stayed in there so long mm. i supposed to have been out in two years oh really okay Okay, so they gave yeah. you ten, but you were gonna get out in two. Yeah, you if ten ten years in, but if you you know you behave yourself and all okay. that, you go to work release and it's about two uh, years or something. Okay, but you would still be in. The, and then I had five year probation too. And you were just in there so wilding out. out yeah, yeah, I, and I didn't care. And it all stemmed from family issues. Like you know, I always felt like you know I wasn't wanted, and nobody give a dang about me. I didn't get no visits, mm. and you know, no visits in the account. No family was. Mm. They was out the picture. There was no, so I was like, my family's the gang, you know, my gang, and mm. you know, so I felt. Damn. And be honest, did any of your homies visit you while you were locked up? No, they wrote me though, because a lot okay. when my uh, OGs wrote me, they was in, they was in Cali. Okay. But not none of the ones in uh, not not in uh. Well, yeah, they did some. They wrote me though. They couldn't come. Most of them couldn't come see me though. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They probably, they didn't want yeah, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, they see. couldn't. They weren't finna do that. Yeah. That makes a lot of they sense. They were going through their own stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, 17. but they wrote me. Seventeen. Yeah. So uh, you you were so you were there for what, what? What were some of the things that got you extended your your stay extended? Well, what got me? Well, I was just in that. I mean, I was like game bang out, man. Like that's that's I didn't care. Like man, I was getting write ups. I was fighting. I think I had you know. I'll be honest. I had like. I'm not even gonna lie. I had like 15 fights or something, and I was—I mean, you couldn't say nothing to me, cause I was mad and I was just, you know, gang. Just I didn't care at that time. I was kind of like suicidal in a way. I'm not gonna go kill myself, but I yeah. just didn't give a fuck. If it happened, it so happened, I too. yeah. So I went from a minimum security prison when I first got there. It was like a college or something. Like I'm talking, this joker had a football field. I was like, yeah, this is tight. And it, it had no fence or nothing. I was like, oh, this is like a dang college campus. So, and you know, all my homies there. And I was like, this is cool. But then I went from there all the way to Supermax in McAllister, uh, the, what they call the walls, uh, 23 hour like that. I went from the minimum to the medium all the way up to Supermax. Yeah. And Supermax means you're just, you're, you're too much to control. So just lock you up. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, they, they just, yeah, you got minimum security prison, you got medium security, and then you got the, the max, which is McAllister. You know, it was one of the worst uh, prisons in America at that time. Mm -hmm. And so that's the last place they send you where you just, you know, we was having riots. I mean, it was just, you know, I didn't give a fuck. Damn. I didn't give a fuck. What, what is something that would set off a riot down in OKC? Okay, so you mean in prison, right? Yeah, yeah, in prison. Yeah, of course. Of course, Okay. I'm sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, man. So in prison is a little different. You hang with your crew, but every time, like you can't, it's still somebody will say something to somebody or somebody got into it with somebody on the streets or, or something like that. But, you know, we had to be around each other. You know what I'm saying? But we was just in our little crew. We don't, we doing what we do. And they do what we do. But, you know, anytime you got conflict like that, you, you know, it just, it just happened. Like, it ain't nothing in particular, like, why do they do, it's just like, you don't want to be around them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just didn't want to be around them. So it, it was all the time, it was something. But not every day, all day, you know, because you, you stay, they just put you in a hole for 30 days, 60 days, but something always going to jump off. You're not even wet. Wet. What's wet? What do you mean, what's wet? You landed in the river, but your clothes are all dry. Illusion, that's all. Just an illusion. Like that jukebox playing in the corner. That's an illusion, too. <laughs> 
Who's really ready to get this shit poppin'? Stay divine in this motherfucker, we not stoppin'. Lock in the game ahead of our time, but that was 20 years ago. We still killin' the rhyme. It's the reunion, unification of the dope singers. I still throw it up and I'm still making the figures. I'm a grown ass man with a lot to live for. Barefoot, walking on the sand and seashore. Chillin', living my life to find a better way. Overlooking the ocean before retirement day. And I'ma get it because I'm different, not like you. Mamba mentality told me to do what I do Creativity, I'm a Libra I balance the scales Giving my gift to the world Like show and tell But don't well I'm a package And maybe you will buy it Just give it one verse When you listen I'm a little bit different I don't know why I do what I do I just don't want to be like you I just don't want to be like you I'm a little bit different Cause the sky ain't always blue Other two eyes cloudy because of all night smoking on some clone god fire yeah. got me higher than the ufo breathing your nose hope that smoke relax exhale slow down the rabbit hole we go never searching for the trick freeze come out that night from what they say and they legit experience seize the moment opportunist i make love to the pressure but i go all in it seems to exist don't get me pissed your host out gets drowned in the abyss can't run my way i leave you in the brush do rack list swim with the fishes can't find your body no reminiscing now you're wishing you never fuck with the birth never ending lesson learned i'm on your head lace front burn pass through your skin now you addicted nigga derm never ever cross the line you will get burned just sit back take notes and wait till turn i'm a little bit different Then you know it's lights out I'll be all in my feels Melting into my couch In another time zone In somebody else's house In the twilight zone Where the street lights out And the tambourine man Tells me about his whole plan Clouds turning into sand Oceans turning into land There's a gun in my hand And a penny in my pocket And I don't even know If I'ma make it to the rocket Cause they just counted down In the at three now So I'm running through the clouds With my luggage and my bible And a smile on my face Cause I'm in another place Where the turtle wins the race And he throws it in your face I don't give two fucks about it, yeah, you know I'm about it, about it Shit, subscribe to the newspaper, read all about it Shit, read the whole book, cause the cover's kinda plain I'm a little messed up, if you know what I'm saying I'm a little bit different I don't know why I do what I do I just don't wanna be like you I just don't wanna be like you I'm a little bit different Cause the sky ain't always blue And the moon ain't always new And the sun ain't always new Beginning to colonize. My friends will be arriving very shortly. I think they're going to like it here. It's a lovely area. So, so remote, so pleasant, so off the beaten track. Just the perfect spot for a colony, don't you think, Mr. Haley? Um, have you ever been in the hole? Yeah, yeah, all the oh, time. Man. 30 days, 60 days. Yeah, so, yeah, that was, that's why I could, and it was a point where I was doing day for day. See, if, you, if you're being good and you're not getting write-ups, like, for every day, they'll give you, like, if I can remember, like, four or five days equal a day. Okay. And you had levels, if you know, if you're do, doing good. But I, it was a point I was just doing day for day because I kept getting write-ups, mm. fighting, going to the hole, get back out, fighting. So, mm. yeah. So is the whole... For people who've never been to prison, is the whole what we've seen in in movies. You know, you're in a, just a little room, basically probably the size of a bathroom. You know, maybe a dirty toilet. You know, yeah, it's and, all uh, a, yeah. With a sliding door yeah. for them to slide your food on, in and all that. Yeah, it's it's some of them clean, some of them dirty, just depending on where you're at. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm. And you just sit there, so you know, twenty three hours. They'll let you out, take a shower, whatever. So I was already preparing myself for you know for supermax, I guess. Mm. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm sure in the 80s and 90s, it, the 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 rodent inf infestation and the ro roaches. I mean, I'm probably sure it wasn't pristine, right? Like it was probably. No, nah, I ain't gonna go that far. I ain't gonna say like the roaches were talking to me. No, like, no, 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 no. Nah, but it was, uh, it was, bad. was there a lot of roaches? And sh you know what I mean? Yeah, it 
Not, not so much, man. Oh, okay. It just depends on where you were. Like when you go to uh, McAllister and when you first hit them, them cell blocks, mm-hmm. oh man, they tore that. I mean, they uh, condemned all that. But mm-hmm. it used to be, oh man, like, Ugh. yeah, but most of the prisons was, you know, they, they was, you know, they pretty cool. Oh, okay. You just locked up in a, you know, mm-hmm. but they slide your food to you and all that, but it wasn't, nah, mm-hmm. like dirty and nasty like that. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Would you say, yeah. looking back, would you say that you suffer from PTSD from, from uh, oh, some of the things that you've experienced? Oh, man. Yes, sir. And you never got no help for that either. Yeah. And I just had to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, even recently, like, even like with the, I mean, it's the PTSD just from prison. But I'm talking about just the gang stuff. Mm, yeah. Like, people underestimate coming out of the gang, you know, and you didn't seen, and what I've seen, and you done done drive by, and you done done all that. We need help just for that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't talking about prison. So, yeah, I deal with all that nightmare. Still do, you know, every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Still do. Yeah, yeah I respect you for admitting to that, man. That's um, and, and also something that, you know, us as people of color, we just don't do is for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, not downing you or anything, but I'm sure. the same way. For whatever reason, we, we don't seek therapy for the shit that we experience. Yeah, a lot of us can't afford it, though. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of us don't even know where to look. I mean, mm-hmm. I can now. You know, I got my own yeah. business. I'm no, I mean in that, that now, 20-year-old, you know, maybe even, you know. 20. Yeah, a lot of us just don't know. You don't know mm-hmm. what you don't know sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? We just we're so used to dealing with the stuff. I mean, because you can look at slavery the same way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we just deal with mm-hmm. it. Like, we went in slavery, but, you know, the fact that we attached to that still, we, yeah. you know, we just deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we fall through the cracks because of that, though. Mm. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, if you could talk to a 16-year-old you who's just yeah. about to get put on, or, you know, just about to, you know, start yeah. start your hood, start to enter that life, what would you tell him? Uh, that's a good question. I never quite, uh, let me see. What would I tell myself? Yeah. Uh, or, or let's, you know let's take you out of I'm gonna it. Give you a, Go I'm going to get you. No, I'm, I'm going to answer that. I'm going to give you an answer you won't expect, though. Okay. I wouldn't tell myself nothing. You know why? Because I wouldn't have listened to myself. Oh, damn. That's how hard-headed That's a, I was. I damn. wouldn't tell myself nothing. I would have said you're going to have to learn the hard way. Because ah. I was that hard-headed, man. Like, I wasn't, man, Man, I wouldn't listen to my parents. I wouldn't li- and I would have, wouldn't have listened to myself, so. I wouldn't have told myself nothing. That's a deep answer. <laughs> Probably my favorite answer so far. That's my favorite answer. That's the answer. truth, though, because yeah. I wouldn't have listened. Yeah. Like, who's this old dude? What is you mm-hmm. talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn, that's so true, homie. That's so true. Yeah, so. Damn, yeah. damn. Do you keep in tune, I guess, with what's going on in, in the gang you know, environment nowadays? Always. Okay. Yeah, always. Even up here, you know, it's gang. I'm in Tacoma, Washington. Even mm-hmm. up here. Yeah, you know, because my, uh, my, my wife's... Uh, brother man just got he was in a, some bloods up here he just got killed by his own homie mm. man my wife's brother and so yeah man i just hate to see that but i yeah, I always uh, that's how i found you mm. like always you know you know that's always gonna be in my heart you know i don't live like that no more but yeah. you know if something like that you you know i spent years of holding that you know what i mean so mm-hmm. yeah what would you say is the biggest difference between gangs from when you were coming up and gangs in 2021 like night and day how so it don't it ain't a, it ain't even oh man it was just more it, it, it nowadays is you can do certain things and you can get away with certain things and you can it's just not like it was on site it was dangerous it was like it, it's not like it was so it's not even i can't even compare them mm. You know, and I'm not out here in the streets like that, but mm-hmm. it's just totally different, man. Like, especially, you know, I'm up here and they walk, you know, the Christian blood walk around together, some of them, and they still got their little gang. And Nah, man, it was what you wear. Mm-hmm. Plenty of time, I had to run. I didn't have nothing on me. And these jokes come about, oh, yeah, we ain't got you. I mean, I had to hit them alleys or something. See, it's not, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gangsters. It's still killing. It's yeah, more gang- killing. Yeah, know? gangsters blend in nowadays. With yeah. This, you, yeah, it's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could tell a gangster back in 1988. He was wearing his oh, color. Yeah. He had oh, yeah. dickies or whatever, certain shoes, yeah. Peloton, whatever the case may yeah. be. Nowadays. Well, what's that you claim? Yeah. <laughs> Wherever you are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you say, uh, I would love to, now Tacoma, well, Washington period was one of the, yeah. for, from what I've heard from, 
OGs who've been on my show was one of the first areas that got infested with gangs. I mean, if you think about it, California is it's right, you know, above California, really. right, right, right. And due to the crack, you know, uh, situation, I, I I do believe they were one of the first um, to experience it outside of California. But are you noticing? Most of the Cali gangs are out in Washington, or do they have like any homegrown gangs that you know about that don't? No, they have. Else? They have. A, they have the uh, homegrown gangs here. There's not many uh, though anymore, like it used to be, because I'm familiar with, with what was happening on the hill back then too. Uh, but it's more homegrown. They, okay. I don't really, you know, the OGs from Cali and stuff. They, they might live out here, but they change their life, and they, you know, they, mm-hmm. they're just more each other, the youngsters with, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, we're we're thirty minutes in. Um, it's been yeah. a pleasure, Renegade. I definitely want to yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Do you have anything oh, you want to promote or anything? Um, I know you said you nah. had a business going on. I mean, do you want to maybe? Oh promote yeah, well, that? you know, I got a yeah. I promote. That. I mean, I got a. I've been for ten years, man. I have a. I went to school and stuff for a period. For I do a graphic design for business. I'm. A, I do consulting. I outsource a lot of work. I do a lot of uh, work for businesses, logo design, videos, websites. So uh, my website is tkclogo.com, which is not up right now because I'm do I got to do some work on it. But on Facebook, they can find me. Yeah, that's what I do, man. For uh, I've done work for companies all over the world, you know, okay. individuals starting businesses. Yeah. TKC logo, right? Logo, right? Yeah. TKC yeah. logo. I'm gonna make now sure. You I can find me, that. yeah. Find me on Facebook or you know dot com. But my, I got to get my site back up. I'm doing some work on. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, dude, it's, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you sharing your your okay. story with us, man. And I'll, I'll be posting this in a couple of weeks, and I'll make sure to send you the link so you can share it with all your people. Okay, man. I appreciate your time. I like what you're doing, man. You know, you know I'm going I'm to send some people there, man, to check it out, man. You, what you're doing is good for the youth. People it. need to know. So, man, I like what you're doing, man. I appreciate you for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Hopefully we can do a part two, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All, all right, right man. I'll stay in touch, dude. Okay, man. All right, take care, man. Peace. You too. Oh, a colony is coming. But it's from Venus. And if you're still alive, I think you'll see how we differ. And I agree with you about what they call music. So. I'm at a crossroads every damn day Looking back in my past when I sleep But living on the edge now I'm doing enough Iniquity down to my feet What do I do when I need a little food And I gotta get the money for the rent Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord Come my son, he can give me some money, repent What? What? Thank you I really love you baby so I spank you Life is a west straight fucking you up Living in a prison, I'ma shank you so what's love got to do with it? When it with my heart on my sleeve, I'm a foe. But she said she loved me, she wanted to hug me, and but she starts get told. And I saw with my little mind's eye, dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight, baby. Ignore the rain, and everything gonna be okay. And while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline, and I'll be biding my time till I can ride the wave. Then everything gonna be okay, yeah What are the chances? You're picking a flight, we're leaving tonight Pack up your bags, we're leaving this place and this baggage Cause what can we do? While Rome is collapsing But not in a day, we'll be okay Let's hit the Amalfia Jackson I'll pull up the map then Cause I'm through keeping up with these Joneses Don't care what they're posting You know, you only see what they show you Let's fall off the grid then Cause we don't owe nothing to no one Darling, just listen It'll be just like starting over I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay I don't even know why I'm here Wanna be on a beach somewhere Be kicked up in my chair Smoke all up in the air Clouds are looking lovely My girl is by my side My gun is by my side But why do cameras always make me look so ugly? And the smile fades when they disappear Till it's only you wishing someone cared Filling out the window, was anybody there? Does anybody care? Was the rope in the fucking chair? And 
since God wanna play these fucking games, I'ma take it there. Bang, bang. And I spy with my little mind's eye. Dreams that'll be on what you can see in daylight, baby. Ignore the rain. And everything gon' be okay. And while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline. And I'll be biding my time. Till I can ride the wave. Everything gon' be okay let me slide on in like I hit a home run Bottle of the night, I get the job done Celebrating life, I buy bottles like I wanna Pour some out for the homies, I'm on ya Reminisce, swing your memory Every time I blaze a tree, voices in my head Keep on urging me, tell them about the story Hate that came from the hood All about the paper, many years misunderstood Thinking I could one day make it on the big stage Amazed at what I say, metaphorical wordplay Fucking up your frequency Catching a move in the groove into a kind of time to stay Nah, I'ma stay high, chilling, embracing the vibe Taking you on a ride and listening for the night As long as you recognize the eyes in the sky I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on what you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gon' be okay And while the world burns I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay